most smuggling of migrants that happens in the world is by land and by air. Uh, smuggling by sea only counts for a very small percent of the overall smuggling that takes place, but it is the most deadly form. Smuggling by sea is visible to the coastal countries of departure and the coastal countries of arrival. But the truth is that smuggling by sea is only a very small part of the overall smuggling process. Some migrants have travelled over a period of weeks or months or even years from an origin country and the sea component is a very small part. So the truth is that the routes are um, extremely long from the country of origin to the country of destination and all of those countries need to be involved. Particularly with smuggling of migrants by sea, uh, it's the most deadly way you can possibly be smuggled. Uh, the smugglers concerned have absolutely no regard for human life and to them every boat represents money. So often regardless of whether it arrives or not, they will profit. Generally one of the key contributing factors is the economic um, position of the migrant. So a migrant who's particularly economically empowered may even be able to negotiate their smuggling fee and they may pay for a complete package from the country of origin through countries of transit all the way to the destination and a, a part of that will be the sea smuggling journey. On the other end of the spectrum, you have migrants who are economically disempowered. There may be a set fee and they have no choice with respect to um, whether they can negotiate it. Although there have been situations of migrants having their fee reduced by saying that they can actually steer the boat. And often they can, but often they can't. And this is another situation which results in a very dangerous one for the migrants on a vessel when, in effect, no one on the vessel knows how to steer it. So we see a lot of variation with respect to fees. But what we know for sure is that generally the higher the fee paid, the safer the journey. The lower the fee paid, the higher the risk. Risk, the risk for smugglers, particularly when they're not on board smuggling vessels, there, there really is no risk because the migrants often don't know who they are. Um, they've facilitated the process, they often have their money, so there is no risk. There's no risk to life and there's very little risk of being detected, particularly if they're not being investigated. Uh, whereas the risk to migrants, of course, is extremely high. Uh, a lot of the smuggling vessels are deteriorated boats that aren't seaworthy, um, so they might not reach their final destination. So the, and, and as we know, it is the most deadly form of migrant smuggling. So there are different types of smuggling vessels used depending on which region and how long the route is. And the practitioners who work out there and face this issue every day, they report seeing every type of boat. They've seen yachts, they've seen, what do you call those? They've seen jet skis. Um, sorry, I just, I just screwed that answer up. Uh, practitioners have seen every type of, of boat imaginable. They've seen rubber dinghies, they've seen um, jet skis in not so many examples, but people have tried. They've seen large cargo ships, they've seen fishing boats, um, and fishing boats is the most common type used. But generally, any, any seaworthy vessel has been appropriated for the purposes of smuggling. Recruitment is an interesting phenomenon with respect to sea smuggling because often the smugglers will recruit migrants who want to be smuggled. So they may even recruit them in the countries of origin or transit. Uh, on the other hand, sometimes the migrants themselves will seek out the smugglers in an international hub, for instance. They might be there for a period of, of months or even years, and they will actively seek out someone to smuggle them. So the recruitment method um, varies depending on where you're talking about. And then in terms of the modus operandi to actually launch a vessel, um, there's many different ways of doing that. And one thing that we, we do know, which is very interesting, is that there's generally two uh, modus operandi for arrival. Uh, one of those methods will try to avoid detection, so it will travel at night hoping not to be seen, so it reaches the, the coastal state of destination. The other method tries to be intercepted and rescued. And in that latter category, uh, often it can be extremely dangerous because the people on board are coached by smugglers to um, put their lives at risk when they see authorities. And so this means that they'll scuttle their boats, they'll, they'll damage their boats so the boats will sink. If they're on rubber dinghies, they'll puncture them. Or if they're on wooden vessels, then sometimes they'll set those vessels alight. And the reason they're doing this is to force uh, authorities to take responsibility for them. 
And of course, that's not always possible when you've got extremely difficult conditions out at sea. And this has resulted in many lost lives. One of the, the key concerns with addressing all types of smuggling is that there's an extreme lack of information. And often data is collected in respect of irregular migration, but it's not disaggregated according to whether migrants use land or air or sea, and it's not considered from the point of view of criminal facilitators behind the process. So the truth is that we just don't need, to, we don't know as much as we need to know to mount an evidence-based response. In one situation that I heard of, a migrant had travelled over a period of several months and that involved dangerous desert crossings. He was ex exposed to exploitation.